Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today, rather tonight, is of course Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. And you know what that means. It's time for another issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. And this time, this blog is going to be chock full of sandbox changes concerning weapons, perks, and all kinds of things. We even learn a bit more about the Adept weapons and the Adept system that's going to be coming with to uh, Trials of Osiris when Beyond Light goes live. There is a lot of stuff to go over in this week's TWAB. So without any further ado, we're just going to jump right on in. In a section titled 110, Meet 120, we first get to learn about some pretty big hand cannon changes that are going to be going live when Beyond Light drops next month on November 10th. Hand cannons have long been a topic of conversation when it comes to buffs and nerfs over the course of Destiny 2. And here we get to learn exactly how the different archetypes of hand cannons are going to be changing and some of them even disappearing. Here's what Bungie had to say. Hand cannons. We're making changes to give hand cannon subfamilies more diversity and more reasons to use each. For aggressive type hand cannons, these are the slower firing 110 RPMs. They've increased the rate of fire from 110 to 120, so you're going to be firing those even faster. They've broken out aggressive hand cannons, allowing custom tuning of stats. For example, damage fall off for 100 range in this subfamily now starts at a hefty 32 meters, by far, making them the longest range hand cannons in the game. Good, the slower rate of fire ones hit harder, they have a higher impact, they should hit harder at longer distances than the current 150s and 180s. Moving on for the adaptive and precision frames, the range stat now has more impact on minimum damage fall off range for both of these archetypes. These are both the 140s and 180 archetypes. Damage fall off for 100 range now starts at 25 meters up from 20 meters. So you're basically going to be doing more damage at longer ranges with the 140s and the 180s. Great change there. For precision hand cannons, these are the 180 rate of fires. Their magazine has been scaled up by a hefty 37%. Fantastic change. And note, this will also affect exotics with that rate of fire. Good stuff all around. I think that's a good buff for the 140s and the 180s. Next up, we have the 150s, by far the most popular in the Crucible. For the lightweights, these have been folded into the adaptive frame subfamily, essentially meaning the 150 uh, archetype of hand cannons now will be 140s when Beyond Light comes out. This includes Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten. There's only going to be one exotic hand cannon that remains in the 150 rate of fire archetype. And of course, they say they're not going to leave it to speculation because it's beautiful, it does solar damage, it makes enemies explode, it's Sunshot. So essentially, when Beyond Light comes out, the 150 rate of fire archetype is being retired. All those hand cannons are moving into the adaptive frame, the 140s, and the only one that's still going to be 150 is the Sunshot. This is a pretty interesting move, and they go on to say that at this time, Lightweight frame hand cannons represent the majority of hand cannon usage in the Crucible. While they experimented with many different ways to even out lightweights and adaptives, lightweight hand cannons consistently retained a faster time to kill. As such, they opted to equalize their rate of fire. They selected 140 rate of fire as it is fairly balanced in the Crucible sandbox. It gives other weapon archetypes more time to breathe between shots, avoids an overabundance of hand cannons with faster time to kill than other weapons, and pairs nicely with the upcoming changes to the 600 rate of fire auto rifles, which are the really popular ones right now. And those are some major changes to hand cannons. I like what they're doing with the 110s. I like that there's going to be firing faster moving forward. I like that they have better range options. I like what they did with the adaptives here. I do find it a little bit interesting since, you know, the adaptive frames, the 140s were competing with the 150s and just being stomped all over. I find it interesting that they didn't just take all the 140s and make those 150s. But again, I guess they say there that uh, it created some balance problems when you took stuff like Ace of Spades and made it fire a little bit faster. Definitely some interesting changes there. Can't wait to see how it's going to work. Uh, with them knocking down that rate of fire, you know, moving those 150s into the 140 archetype, I wonder if that's going to change the recoil pattern for any of those guns. Honestly, I hope not. But anyways, moving on, next up we learn about some changes coming to sniper rifles. And here, they state that they want sniper rifles to feel powerful without being so easy to use that they dominate. And so, they've adjusted how aim assist is affected by sniper rifle zoom level. Lower zoom scopes will have less aim assist, 
Higher zoom scopes will have more, and scopes with around 50 zoom will remain unchanged. So the lowest zoom scopes will have a large reduction in their overall aim assist cone angle, and highest zoom scopes will have a small increase. I think that's a fair change. Uh, the aim assist on a lot of the snipers we have right now is way too high. Anybody who's used a revoker knows how easy it is to, to kind of pull those bullets towards the head with that thing. So I'm not exactly mad about this change here. I think uh, for the, the higher zoom scopes, you should have a better aim assist factor there. I am a little worried that they didn't mention flinch at all here. But anyways, moving on, we've got auto rifle changes next. In Season of the Worthy, the adaptive frame archetype, which is the 600s of course, was given a buff. They're pulling that back a little bit to keep it in check with other auto rifle archetypes. I was a bit worried when I first read this, but thankfully the change isn't too crazy. The only thing they've done is reduce the damage per bullet from 15.75 per shot to 14.25. So about a, a point and a half of damage has been taken off per bullet. I was worried that they were going to destroy the range on 600. So I'm really surprised and really happy to see that they didn't go that route and all they're doing is knocking back the damage a little bit. And of course, prior to Season of the Worthy, when these auto rifles got their buff, the damage per bullet was 13.75 uh, per shot. So you're still doing more damage than you used to do, just not quite as much as they do right now. I think that's a fair change. Looking forward to seeing how it's going to affect things in the Crucible. After that, Scout Rifles. We've got some interesting changes coming for those. Scouts have a reasonable time to kill, and can't be adjusted too much without making them dominate the battlefield, so we're making them a little easier to use. And so, they've increased how much each point of the aim assist stat widens the aim assist cone, and at maximum, the aim assist cone is now 15% wider. I think this is really interesting. We all know scout rifles have needed a buff for a long, long time, but the question has always been, how do they buff them? What do they do with scout rifles? If they bump up the damage too much, uh, they become completely dominant outside of close range. And so I think it's rather interesting that rather than changing the damage or the range or the effectiveness of scouts, they're just changing the way that aim assist is affected by the aim assist scout or stat on scout rifles. Basically, the higher your aim assist stat now, the wider it, it, your, your aim assist cone is going to be getting even wider, up to 15% wider. I think that's going to be a very interesting change. I do believe scout rifles deserve a bit more aim assist in Crucible. They should be a bit stickier because, uh, you know, you're going to be using them, hopefully at the upper ends of mid range all the way out to long range. And it can be kind of hard to stay tracked on targets right there. I'll be very interested in seeing how that's going to affect guns like the Mita Multitool, which already have a pretty high, you know, a pretty high aim assist stat. And I really want to see how this cone is going to be changed by this. Interesting. I guess we'll have to see exactly how that plays out. Next up. We've got changes to rocket launchers. These heavy weapons currently have very low reserves, so we're adjusting that. We expect to take a look at rocket launchers in a future season. So they're gonna, they're making a small change now. Basically, they've increased the reserve ammo that you have by one or two rockets depending on the inventory stat. And they're looking at making further changes down the road. Really happy to hear about that last part, you know, cause, uh, I don't think, Adding a little bit more ammo to your rocket launcher is really going to change things too much. Rockets need a lot more love than they're getting right now. And I would argue you already have the answer, Bungie. It was rockets in D1. Bring back tripod on, you know, other rockets, not just the truth. Bring back grenades and horseshoes, stuff like that. You start incorporating those changes and I think you'll see a rather large uh, shift towards using rockets in more game modes. All right. That's it for the weapon-based changes, at least the legendary weapon-based changes. The next group of changes concern perks and exotic weapons, and we've got some big stuff to cover here. First up, we've got a pretty big perk change to Outlaw. They're basically giving it a buff. The reload speed increase felt insufficient with certain subfamilies and combinations of roles. Uh, for example, aggressive hand cannons. So they've increased the reload stat bonus from plus 50 to plus 70. I think this is a good change. If you'll remember a couple of, uh, a couple of big patches ago, Bungie put out that big blog post talking about reload speed and all the different factors that make up for it. And they nerfed Outlaw in the update that came from that. I argued back then that was a huge mistake. And I'm glad to see that Bungie at least, uh, agrees with me a little bit and is knocking back up the reload speed benefit that Outlaw gives you by just a little bit. Happy about that. Next up. Some exotic changes. Well, one exotic change, Merciless. They've increased the inventory stat of the Merciless exotic fusion rifle uh, up from 36 to 55. These are the shots that you have in reserve. 
I'll take any buff that you want to give Merciless. Great gun in both PvE and surprisingly good in PvP. Next is going to be probably the biggest bit of news outside of the Trials weapon for this week. Mountaintop. They're finally nerfing the Mountaintop. They state here that they've heard tons of feedback on Mountaintop and they feel that it's a bit over the top in Crucible modes. So they've made some pretty big changes that in my opinion are probably going to hit the weapon pretty hard. Here's some specific pain points that people have complained about. It's a one-shot body shot weapon with infinite range. It's quick and easy cleanup of wounded guardians even around corners. It deals high splash damage rewarding players for inaccuracy. And it's got perfect in-air accuracy which allows guardians to rain down death and there's not really much grounded guardians can do to respond. And so here are the changes intended to address those points. One. They've reduced the splash damage by 33% and increased the impact damage such that the total damage is about 5% lower than before. That's a huge nerf to the mountaintop. Again, part of the reason why it's so good is you can just get a couple of shots in with your, with a, your, your, your secondary weapon, like an auto rifle or a hand cannon, and then just haphazardly fire your mountaintop to get an easy splash damage cleanup kill. So nerfing that splash damage by 33% is huge. Next, they've reduced the projectile velocity multiplier from the micro missile perk from 1.4 to 1.2, meaning it's going to be about 20% faster than other breach type grenade launchers uh, when Beyond Light drops instead of the 40% faster that it is right now. And finally, they've reduced the in-air accuracy. Now has a significant projectile error while in-air, around 7 degrees without the Icarus Grip mod, and substantially less with that mod equipped. I find that to be rather interesting considering Mountaintop you know is supposed to be a rocket. It's a, it's a rocket propelled grenade. It's just kind of a, a straight firing thing. I wonder what they mean by less in-air accuracy. The thing's supposed to be flying straight. But either way, those are the nerfs that are coming to everybody's favorite crucible pinnacle weapon, the Mountaintop. And I gotta say, I haven't seen a nerf, a weapon specific nerf smackdown this bad since the Recluse. Oof. But it's not the only big nerf that's contained in this week's TWAB. Next up, this one might hurt you. You might want to take a seat. The Falling Guillotine is going to be seeing a pretty big nerf. They've reduced the heavy attack damage by 24% to bring it in line with other swords. Almost a fourth of its current damage. Oof. They give a note here saying Falling Guillotine will continue to be slightly above average, just not to the extent that it is now. Ooh, I gotta say, I don't like that one. We finally had a sword that allowed us to get up close and personal with big boss enemies who like to do, you know, Nova stomps and all that kind of stuff. And now it's just getting absolutely destroyed. Oof. Next up, we've got some changes for the Mita Mini Tool and Mita Multi Tool, as well as the Sturm and Drawn. For the Mita Mini Tool, they've moved the Mita Synergy trait and made it intrinsic, similar to how the Baroque version, which you get from the Menagerie, currently works. They've also added the following perks, Hip Fire Grip and Kill Clip. And they know there's an issue with the masterwork of this weapon that currently prevents it from being upgraded. That will be fixed in a later update. And the gunsmith will begin selling a version of this weapon on November 10th with no infusion cap. Fantastic news. They do something similar with the, uh, the drawn here too, which we'll cover in just a second. But these weapons, you know, are supposed to pair with certain exotics. And without these legendary weapons, those exotics aren't very good. So it's great to see that there's going to be no infusion cap and that you'll be able to just straight up purchase the new version of this weapon from Banshee when Beyond Light goes live. But all right, moving on to Drawn, they've moved the Together Forever trait also to be a, a new intrinsic, similar to how the Baroque version works, and they've added Accurized Rounds and Moving Target. Great changes there. After that, we've got a huge nerf coming to one of the most unique guns in the game, Ruinous Effigy. And this one really, really hurts me. For the transmutation spheres that you create with this weapon, they've reduced the damage of the aerial melee attack by 25%. Again, cutting that down by a fourth is huge. And also significantly reduced the damage of the drain effect on enemy combatants. This hurts my soul. Who in the world was asking for a ruinous effigy nerf? The only thing I can think of is, is maybe that there's some bit of content coming that they feel like a ruinous effigy trivializes. I still say that's dumb. Why in the world are you nerfing this super unique, really fun, 
awesome weapon and like nerfing it significantly. Again, losing 25% of your damage on the aerial melee attack is one thing, but notice the second line there, significantly reduce the damage of the drain effect on enemy combatants. For those who don't know, the drain effect is the overshield that you can put up with the transmutation spheres. And what worries me here is their wording. They gave us the number with the aerial attack. 25% damage nerf, that's huge. All they said for this is significantly reduce the damage. The fact that they didn't give us a number there means, to me, the drain effect is probably going to be all but useless when this nerf goes into effect. And I gotta say, I am not at all okay with that. But all right, moving on. Next up, Arbalest. No longer strikes shields multiple times, but its efficacy against shielded targets has been increased, so it's not gonna hit uh, you know shields multiple times when you hit a shielded target, but its damage against shields is gonna be, I guess, a bit higher. Interesting. And for Jade Rabbit, the armor-piercing rounds perk has been swapped to high-caliber rounds. Apparently, armor-piercing rounds was causing an issue with the uh, Fate of All Fools perk on the Jade Rabbit, so they removed it, swapped it with high-caliber, so all of that should be working moving forward. But all right, Guardians, there we go. That's it for some of the big sandbox changes that Bungie had to talk about in this week's TWAB. I told you there's a lot of stuff there, a lot of really big changes, and a lot of heavy-hitting nerfs. A lot of stuff I wasn't really happy to hear. But we've got one more big topic to talk about in this week's TWAB, and that is the future of Trials of Osiris. Adept weapons are on their way and will be ready when Beyond Light drops. Beginning in Beyond Light, all existing trial weapons will have adept versions. Our intent is for all new trial weapons to have an adept version in the future, with their infusion caps matching the season they were introduced in. For our first round of adepts, their infusion caps will be set to that of the season of the worthy. Additionally, we will be introducing adept weapon mods into the sandbox in Beyond Light, which can only be applied to adept weaponry. I already love the sound of this because it sounds like incentive to actually play Trials. Let's dive into some of these changes. First, here's how Adept weapons are going to differ from the base weapons. Master working an Adept weapon will grant additional stats, plus 10 for the primary stat as usual, which is something like range or handling or reload speed or something like that. It'll be tied to the specific master work of that weapon, and then plus 3 for all alternate stats. So getting the Adept weapon is going to be point for point better than the normal version. Additionally, Adept weapons can use either a standard weapon mod or a new Adept weapon mod earned when going flawless. A unique Adept Shader has also been made available for these weapons. And note, these shaders are not awarded as a consumable when dismantling an Adept weapon. As such, they cannot be applied to other pieces of gear. So it's going to be a special shader you can only earn by going flawless, and you can only apply to Trials of Osiris weapons. I love that. This is all kinds of incentive to play. But let's talk a bit about these Adept mods, because some of them are going to be pretty darn good. These mods come in two varieties. Weapon stat boosts, each of which grant plus 10 to a particular stat in a similar way to masterwork stats. For example, adept range plus 10, which is crazy. You can just add plus 10 to any of the base stats of a weapon. And of course, versions of some existing mods granting an improved bonus, but with a downside. Base version of the mod is going to be explained here. Uh, for example, they give adept magazine, which gives plus 40 to the magazine, but minus 20 to handling. Whereas Backup Mag, which is the normal version of this mod, gives plus 30 to the magazine. So you can get some big benefits, but with a slight drawback. I love the sound of this. After that, we learn a bit more about the acquisition of these weapons and mods. To earn Adept Weapons and Adept Weapon Mods, players must complete a Flawless Trials Passage and open the Flawless Chest at the Lighthouse. Each week, a different Adept Mod can drop from the Flawless Chest. Adept weapon mods will be on a weekly rotation, so a given mod may not make its appearance until later in the season. The mod is unlocked for use on owned adept weapons when acquired. Adept weapons will be available from the flawless chest on a bi-weekly basis, alternating with armor drops. The first adept weapon acquired on a given week is guaranteed to be a pinnacle drop, and adept weapons will be on a set rotation so players may continue to earn alternate rolls on specific adept weapons when completing flawless passages throughout a given weekend. This is all incredible news. It means you are going to have incentive not just to earn those adept weapons once, but to get multiple rolls of them because they're going to be different. You're going to be incentivized to run trials for multiple weeks to get different versions of mods and that kind of stuff that you can apply, uh, to get different or differing amounts of the new adept shader that you can apply to the trials weapon. This is exactly 
exactly what Trials of Osiris needed. The number one thing Trials needed was uh, Bungie getting rid of a lot of those cheaters, which they successfully seem to have taken a good strike against. We talked about that in a previous video with Perfect Aim and all of that. But the second thing, the second biggest thing Trials needed was incentive to play. And this is incentive in spades. Well done, Bungie. I love the way Adept stuff sounds here. And while all of this is well and good, you might be asking about new Trials Armor. Well, they state that they will have a Trials Armor refresh planned for a future season after Beyond Light comes out. So wait a couple seasons and you're going to have a new set of armor to go after as well. Great stuff all around from Bungie. Now, they go on to note that we will be learning more about abilities in the coming weeks. So if you're looking to hear more about class abilities and how those are going to be changing in Beyond Light, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. But all in all, I'd say there's been some pretty good news, at least in terms of Trials of Osiris here. All right, the last thing to talk about this week is we've got some brand new Twitch Prime rewards. If you've got a Twitch Prime account, link it to your Bungie account and you can get access to these rewards as well by heading to uh, the Prime Gaming Portal to redeem these cosmetic rewards. There's even a brand new Sparrow, the Cryptomnesia Sparrow, which is covered in all kinds of frosty goodness. If you need a link to all that stuff, I'll have it down in the description box below. But alright Guardians, that's pretty much it for the biggest bits of news contained in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog. The last thing to talk about, of course, is the question of bounties. A lot of you Guardians are out there hoarding bounties, preparing for Beyond Light to come, uh, hoping that you can, you know, start that experience off, redeem those bounties, and get a huge EXP bonus. Bungie stayed kind of mum on that, but thankfully this week they actually addressed it. Here's what they had to say about bounty hoarding. Most of your bounties will stay intact when Beyond Light comes out, but any bounties tied to specific seasonal activities or content entering the Destiny Content Vault will be removed on November 10th. Examples of this would include Black Armory, Gambit Prime, or Festival of the Lost Bounties. Additionally, any bounties that grant progression towards Infamy and Valor may negatively impact your powerful rewards, as they will be limited to the Season of Arrival's power levels. Our recommendation is to go ahead and claim your bounties, just to make sure you don't miss out on any XP or glimmer. So for any of you out there who are prepping for Beyond Light, keep that in mind. Those are the bounties that'll work, and those are the bounties that won't. But alright Guardians, that's it for the biggest bits of news. I think this video has gone on long enough. Crazy changes to the sandbox here, and I know a lot of you guys are going to have some pretty strong opinions about the hand cannon changes, the exotic changes, and of course, the mountaintop. So be sure to leave me all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Make sure you let me know how you feel about the Trials Adept stuff. I think that sounds really, really good. But anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But I'm out for now. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.